The transistor wars, where radio brands competed by seeing how many transistors they could cram in their products and how loudly they could brag about it. The name transistor wars comes from what? The name comes from the gas wars of the 1950s and 60s. And what were those? Well, in mid-century America, at the intersection of any two major roads, was a gas station. Sometimes two, three, or even all four of the corners of that intersection would have a gas station. All different brands, of course. They could all see each other's pricing, and they generally kept their own prices in line with the others. But once in a while, one station would want to increase sales by undercutting the others, and they'd drop their price below the going rate. The other stations then might undercut that price. Then the first station drops its price even further. The next thing you know, your uncle calls your dad on the phone and says, Hey, there's a gas war going on at 5th and Main. You might want to get down there. Now, in a pocket transistor radio, six transistors proved to be the optimal number for such a radio to have, considering performance and price. This fabulous global GR900 transistor radio had nine transistors and wasn't any too shy in saying so. The big nine on the front of this radio kicked off the transistor wars, where radio makers competed by offering more and more transistors in their radios. I say this radio kicked off the transistor wars, but it might have been this radio, this Omscolite screaming about its seven transistors. It's impossible to isolate the exact radio that started it all, but this global is as likely as any to stake that claim. Falling transistor prices made these increasing transistor counts possible. In 1954, at the time of the first transistor radio, the Regency TR1, the transistors in that radio cost the manufacturer around two and a half dollars each. In ten years, by the mid-1960s, the wholesale price of transistors for radios had dropped to just pennies apiece. And so some radio makers, especially those in Hong Kong, began offering radios with as many as 14 or 15 transistors. The circuits in most of these radios had no use for anything more than 9 or 10, so those extra transistors were often just sitting there, not even wired into the circuit. But the bigger numbers looked good and helped the smaller brands market their radios, even if the advantage offered was dubious. Well, now here's a curious thing. Most of the transistors in this Hong Kong-made 15-transistor nobility radio are stamped USA. Now, this global GR900 here really did use all nine of its transistors, and it's a good performing radio. It appeared around 1960 at quite a pivotal moment and represents a kind of end of an era because after this global, as the transistor count went up, the effort devoted to design went down. We saw increasingly plain, boring radios in this era, as product design and styling took a back seat to transistor count and price. The Raleigh folks slapped together this cheapie with an all-metal front. Style-wise, it's a box. And black, of course. This 12-transistor disappointment was made in Hong Kong. 14-transistor, boasts this Tempest Hi-Fi Deluxe pocket transistor radio, with a speaker grill shape that reveals a design department completely out of ideas. 
It's made in Hong Kong and is jam-packed with, as is claimed, 14 transistors. And here's the OMGS Suburbia Long Distance with 12 transistors. Another all-metal front. But an unusual design with that knob on the corner. Unusual, but, you know, so what? And packed with 12 transistors, as promised. You could call this Viscount 12 transistor minimalist, but I think all they really intended to minimalize were their costs. It's an all-plastic radio, except for its nameplate. That plastic is trimmed in silver, using some process that was about as permanent as a sandcastle on the beach in a rainstorm. And the radio is black. Of course, black. Another Viscount, a 14 transistor. This one's got a metal grill, but that's neither praise nor scorn. The whole thing is just another mediocrity. But with 14 transistors, this Safari has 15 transistors. Take that, Viscount. And a similarly pointless grill shape we saw earlier. What radio was that? Oh, yes, the Tempest. No, the Safari grill is not exactly the same shape, but that, too, is neither praise nor scorn. I think it's something more like nausea. And look at the way these 15 transistors are crammed in here. It looks like your neighbor's driveway. You know, the one with all the cars. You have one of those in the neighborhood, don't you? I sure do. Jade. Oh, Jade. Did any company ever spend less on product design than Jade? But it's got 12 transistors and a red knob. You'd think something called Jetstream would be pretty sleek and impressive. Well, nope. Not here on this yawn, black radio with its yawn, all-metal front. Hong Kong produced this masterpiece of mediocrity, stuffing it full of the 14 transistors it doesn't even need. And the Raleigh people are back at it, this time with a 12-transistor model that is not black. Well, that's something... I wish I could say the same for the design of it, but no, it's a very consistent trade-off we see. More transistors, less design. This late 60s ad from Acorn Gem Electronics shows 10, 12, and 14 transistor models with a $1 price difference between them. Hey, that 12 transistor Viscount for $5.99, where have we seen that before? Oh, yeah, our minimalist all plastic favorite from before. 16? This Fiesta has 16? Well, Top was the seller of this thing, the same distributor that sold the Juliet's. And it's from Taiwan. Let's see these 16 transistors. Hmm. The label says Solid State 16 AM Pocketable Radio. 6 transistor. 10 diode. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Raleigh. Yes, them again. Raleigh hits a new high and a new low with this one. The high is 16 transistors. The low is, well, you know what the low is. And even this blue anodizing on the front isn't going to save it. I think, actually, it makes it worse. Counting the transistors inside, I only get up to 12, but maybe there are more under the circuit board. Or maybe the 16 transistors is just a lie. 
Would you put it past them? And then there's this one, so colossally gaudy that it even has a video of its own. The Juliet 14 transistor with the alligator, chrome, and flat black trim. Oh boy, this one's made in Japan or Hong Kong. Examples have been found with either Japan or Hong Kong noted on the back. Nobody won the transistor wars, but there were losers. Design and styling were the biggest losers as the transistor count went up and the prices went down. I don't think the consumer would see it this way, but I believe they were the biggest losers of all. They didn't value design, didn't want to pay for it, and never knew what they missed. From our vantage point as collectors, we can see what they missed.